the concept of stress. And for that, we'll consider a continuum body and a certain point at the interior of the body. Let's call it, for the time being, O. So that's, I'm going, just, I can just place the X of coordinates uh, at this point with no loss of generality. So let's consider this plot and I consider this particle O at the interior of the body. And now I will consider the following. One plane, which is an inclined plane, which is not passing by O throughout. It's just passing uh, at a distance H from O with a certain inclination, which is given by the normal to the surface S. So imagine I have the coordinates and then I have this plane, which is an inclined plane with a normal N of, of, of components N1 and 2 and 3 in the normal, and then a distance H from the, from the, from the plane. So this surface cuts the axis in three points, and from that I can construct this tetrahedron, which is made by the original surface of area S, and a surface which is that side, a surface S1, uh, another area, another uh, side of the tetrahedron, which is that with area S2, and the other side with area S3. Okay? So that is a very geometrical, simple geometrical proof that said, of course, if I change the inclination of n, the resulting S1, S2, S3 will change. Okay? If, I train, if I change n, the forces will change. And they are related with each other in terms of the cosinus of, the, uh, of, the, of, these, of these angles and so on. It's easy to prove that S1 is just trivially S, the, this force, times the first component. S2 is S times the second component. S3 is S times the third, the third component. Okay? Let's, I mean, take it as uh, true. And then, before proceeding, let me recall something that you know, you should know. Some theorem fr from the calculus, which is the mean value theorem. I will explain that in just one dimension, but it can be generalized in any dimension. Imagine that you have a certain continuous function, f of x. Okay, continuous, continuous. If it's not continuous, doesn't apply. But I recall that we assume that all our functions are continuous. And this function, let's consider this function living in the certain domain omega, okay? I wonder about the mean value of this function. This function at every point has a different value. I wonder about the mean value. How is the mean value? Well, is the sum, the, the area of this function divided by the length of the domain that I'm considering. So the mean value times the domain provides the area, that is the integral of the function over the domain, okay? That's what we call the mean value. So far, so good. The mean value can be obtained in any case. But the theorem is said that if f is continuous, there is a, po a point, x star, which lives, that's important, that's very important for our purposes, lives, is inside the domain omega, where the function f takes the mean value, okay? So there is a point where the corresponding evaluation of the function coincides with the mean value. And that's quite logical if you think of it. The problem says any continuous function in a domain omega takes its main value at, the, at cer a certain point which lives, which is inside the domain. If it's not continuous, we cannot say that. Okay? Can we take the mean value outside? But if it's continuous, that's important. So, if I know that point, the evaluation of the function at this point times omega results into the integral, the sum of all forces, okay? That's something that is fulfilled then. The two things, first the mean value times the area or the length of the volume of the domain is equal to the integral of the function, and second, that this mean value is achieved, is, is taken at certain point at the interior of the domain. And this, of course, can be generalized for one dimension, like here, but also for two and three dimensions, okay? So just close this parenthesis and go back to the, what we were do, uh, dealing with. So now let's consider what are the traction vectors. Of course, this can be considered as a, as a continuum body. It's a set of material forms and material surface. It can be considered as a, a body, continuum body. So you can talk about traction vectors on the boundaries. What are the boundaries? The force S 
union the, 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 the area of the S, of the boundary S, union S1, union S2, union S3. Okay, that's the boundary. So I can talk on tractions on every of these forces, on these surfaces. Okay, let's first think the inclined area S. There is a traction vector at every point of here, okay, which will be produced by the other particles outside in contact with that. Okay? And I'm not plotting here all the attractions. I'm plotting just the mean value of all tractions on S. I call it T star. The mean value. Where is this force applied? Where is this force? Uh, this I know by the th mean theorem, uh, mean, mean value theorem, that there is one point where the actual traction coincides with the uh, mean value of the traction. Okay? That point, let's call that X as a star. So that point here, we have plot the force, is X as a star, is where the mean value, mean traction on the domain S uh, acts. Okay? So by the way, if I wanted to integ integrate the tractions over all the domain, the only thing I would have to do is multiply this T star times the domain, times the S. Okay? What is important? that this point is inside this domain. It's not here, it's not there, it's not there, it's inside. Because T are supposed to be continuous functions. Okay? So now let's look at the surface as one. What is this one? At this one here, okay? There will be a number of tractions which are the resulting of contact forces that are done from the outside particles to, to there. Look, these tractions in general would be a, a vector, a traction vector, would be, uh, would be done on a point X and the normal. What is the normal of that? By the way, by construction, the normal of that is minus E1. E1, which is not plot, uh, is, 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 the, is the basis vector in that direction. But since the outward normal is in, in the other direction, would be tractions of po points X of the surface and on the minus E1. Here I am using the, the first Cauchy theorem. I said that this traction only depends on the points and minus one, and the normal, which is constant, by the way, but they do not depend on the inclination, so it doesn't matter on that. Okay. By the way, if I define that these tractions are minus T1, then this T1 that I'm defining here are the tractions on the normal one, in virtue of the second uh, 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 Cauchy's theorem. So T of X minus U1 equal minus T of X E1, changing the sign of the normal. So now I just define this as minus T1, T1 then meaning the traction vector corresponding to this point, to every point of the surface, in the direction E1, not in minus E1, because the minus is only contained here. So this minus T1 is the one that I plot here, T1 being the force on the contrary sense. Okay? By the way, where is this acting? I place that in certain point, x is one uh, asterisk, where the mean value of these forces is achieved. In virtue of the mean value problem, this point, x is one, is on this surface. Similarly, I can define minus T2 as the, the forces exerted at every point of S2 in the directions minus E2, so T2 as the forces exerted at every point on the direction, direction E2, on the normal E2. So, uh, and I plot just the mean value, that's why a star is here, in a certain point X2, and the same in a certain point X3 minus T3. So I have defined the body forces, the surface forces, in terms of the mean values acting at certain points uh, of every of these four surfaces, which are inside every of these surfaces, in virtue of the mean value problem. Okay? Okay. So, these are four forces. Let's go ahead. Now, there is another thing, which would be the body forces. There will be body forces right here. They are not plotted here, but they should be. The body forces are forces acting on the interior of this, of this, of this domain, and they will be characterized by a body forces vector, 
which can vary along a space, but just I just consider that this body forces, in terms of its mid value, let's call that, uh, I will back to that, body forces, body forces B, at a certain point at the interior where the mean value is achieved. So everything is plotted here in terms of where the mean value is achieved with, by in virtue of the mean value theorem, is achieved always in certain point of the considered domain. Okay, so now let's consider the supply mechanics. The equilibrium or the first Newton principle, the second Newton principle, applied to this body. What says the second Newton for, uh, principle? Forces equal mass times acceleration. Okay, so let's apply it to it. What are the forces? Well, the forces, the forces, the sum of forces would be the integral of body forces plus the integral of boundary forces. Equal mass of acceleration is the sum for every particle of mass of acceleration. So the integral of mass, which is rho dv, times acceleration integrated over the volume. So this is the application of the second Newton's law equilibrium force equal max, ma not equilibrium, so second Newton's law, force, more body forces plus traction forces equal mass times acceleration, which can be expressed as rho dv times a. This has to be fulfilled for any, any of these volumes, in particular for this tetraedron that I have studied, which has, I recover, that has one ver principal vertex, place that the, the, the vertex, the apex of this pyramid is the particle <coughs> they are studying. Okay? Okay, so now let's spread that in a simpler manner. Okay? Instead of, well, first, uh, instead of putting integrals, I will use the mean, mean value problem to represent this in terms of the mean value problems, the mean value value, the mean value on the domain, so the, the rho b is a vector whose mean value would be rho b star achieved in a certain in a point of an interior of b and multiplying this mean value times b returns that. Also t differential of s can be expressed as the mean value times s. Minus t1 differential of s can be expressed as minus t1 average in the mean, in the mean value times s1 times s2 times s3 and also this term here. The acceleration, assume it's a continuum vector, can be replaced by its mean value, which is achieved in a point of interior of the domain B, times the volume B. So this is equal to this, but instead of talking about integrals, I talk about mean values. Okay? And of course, to obtain the integral, I have to multiply every mean value times the volume or surface corresponding at every case, and I know that these mean values are achieved at points at the interior of domain V, this, domain A is that, domain S1, that, the minus 2, that, etc. Okay? By the way, I can also replace here that equation and obtain an equation by multiplying B. B is, by the way, what is the volume? There's a pyramid of surface S and 8H. Okay? What is the volume of the pyramid? You know, one third of the basis area times the height, okay? So that is what I replace here. One ter third of volume is replaced by one third of the surface times the height. And just replace that. Also N1 is that S uh, is S, that, that S1 is N S1, that uh, N1 times S, S2 is N2 times S, S3 is N3 times S, and this again volume is replaced by one third of H times S. So I can just simplify by S here. As a original term, I can simplify. So I obtain one equation, which is that. Okay, which is that. And now, now, that is, it's a still the equilibrium of this theta -era. It's just something that happens for this theta -era. By the way, it happens for this theta -era and any theta -era. Okay, just replacing the n1, n2, and n3 correspondingly, I can just apply this to any data changing the normal. And look, I could also make this data keeping fixed n, make 10th ten, make ten h to 0. So make h smaller and smaller and smaller. So approach this plane, approach this plane 
to the origin, keeping the normal. And I would obtain a sequence of tetrahedra for which this condition would, 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 would hold. OK? OK, so let's do it. But what happened in this limit? Look, the points where all mean forces were applied stay in the, in, in the interior of every domain. But look, that, those point, that point also tends to O. You agree with me? That point also tends to O. Every point tends to O. OK? In the limit. OK? So let's take the limit. By doing that, and look, in the limit, that term depends on H. When that H tends to 0, this term cancels. And also, the term of the acceleration at the right-hand side cancels. And all the actions, T, what is T? T star then degenerates into the vector traction of at point O following the traction vector at point O in the direction N. So that was not at the beginning, it was not at the point O. What's at the point that I turn as a star? But now as a star tends to O. So I can just replace T star by T of O N. Okay? T1 star is replaced by T1 with no star. Which was T1 now? Is the traction vector at point O in the direction E1. T2 star is T2, which replaces, which is the the traction vector at point O in the direction E2. And T3 is the, the, the point, the traction vector at point O in the direction E3. So I just take the limit. This is the limit of that. What has happened here in the limit? These terms drop out. <coughs> and these T stars, T1 star, T2 star, which are tractions evaluated at points different from O, now are tractions following certain normals, in the case of this, the normal N, in the case of this, the normal E1, in the case of T, the normal E2, and that is the, the, the normal E3, evaluated, that's important, at point O. And this is just pure mathematical development. And finally, I obtain this, this magic formula that says, if I want to compute the traction vector, at point O in the direction N, now at point O at direction N, which is that, I just compute this term, which is expressed here, using compact notation, the sum of T1, T1 meaning the vector, the traction vector at point O in the direction 1, times N1, N1 being the first component of N, plus T2, T2 standing for the traction vector at point O in the direction 2 times and 2 and so on. Okay? So that says, first consequence, not trivial, that the traction vector at point O on a certain direction can be automatically computed once I know what is that vector, so these, these components, and when I compute, know the traction vectors on the three, acting on three planes, plane E1, plane E2, plane E3. That is what this fundamental equation says, which is not, not just a consequence of applying the second Newton's law to this tetrahedron and take the limit. 